Hello, I'm Matthew B. Lamont, and welcome to another Trailer Reaction Videos. Today, we're going to look at HBO Max's Looney Tunes cartoons, which you can ex see exclusively on HBO Max. Yes, right, you can see exclusively on HBO Max. So now, a little introduction. Between 1930 to 1969, Warner Brothers made a series of cartoons to rival the success of Disney's Silly Symphonies called Looney Tunes. And over the years, between 1930 through 1969, there were 1,001, I repeat, I'm not making this up, 1,001 Warner Brothers cartoons. And they had various directors, animation directors, like Tex Avery, Bob Clampett, Chuck Jones, Frizz Freeling, and Bob McKimson. Tex, you might know, was known for creating Bugs Buddy and Daffy Duck, as well as uh, Porky Pig, but I think Jack King made Porky Pig. I'm not sure about that. Also, um, Bob Clampett created Sylvester and Tweety, and Chuck Jones, he made Peppa Le Pew, Coyote and Roadrunner, Sniffles the Mouse, and he made some of the most memorable Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck cartoons. He also created Marvin the Martian. And then we have Frizz Freeling. He created Yosemite Sam. And he designed Speedy Gonzales. Redesigned Speedy Gonzales, which leads us to the next one. Um, Bob McKimson, who originally created Speedy Gonzales. And he also created... Tasmanian Devil, and Foghorn Leghorn. So, now, with, uh, no, uh, f oh yeah, by the way, Frizz Frilling not only created, uh, Yosemite Sam, but Rocky and Muggsy as well, the two gangsters. And Chuck Jones also created Michigan J. Frog. Okay, enough said. And some of these cartoons ended up with Oscars. Some of them got nominated as well as they won for Oscars, such as um, Nighty Night Bugs in 1958 and Birds Anonymous, which was a parody of Alcoholics Anonymous. So, with that, uh, it was very popular, these cartoons. Also, through time, Looney Tunes was known for mocking anything from current events to popular culture. The Great Depression, World War II, the communist threat, no, 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 television, aliens, children's stories, travelogue films and documentaries, and movies, radio, and television shows. So when Looney Tunes flippin' mocks you, that's when you know when you are popular. This was like way before Mad Magazine. And these timeless cartoons were very funny, but with every up, there's a down. I mean, along came the 1960s when they were on television and parents complained that they were like too violent. Along came the 70s with a suicide rates going high throughout the decade due to teenagers committing suicide back in the 70s and as a result they decided to delete any scene that involves suicide and then two decades later in the 2000s people were becoming skeptical and politically correct saying it made fun of not only races but uh also they complain about bugs bunny dressing up in drag because it promotes homosexuality I know. We don't I don't want to touch that subject. Anyway, without uh the these characters, very timeless. And if you watch these cartoons, look at the classics. Apart from how well written they were, how they were very well animated. They had like perspective, line and plane relationship that uh you can see how anatomical they were in terms of body proportion, and you get the squash and stretch, and the energy and pacing going on. I grew up with Looney Tunes since I was a kid, seeing them on television in the 80s, and had a laugh out of it. So, without uh, further introduction, 
I'm going to show you the HBO Max's Looney Tunes cartoons. And let me think about what they are, and I'll show you my thoughts. Gossamer. That looks great, especially at the end where they play the merry-go-round broke down, which was the official theme song to the Looney Tunes. And the, when I saw Porky Pig, he's going to say, there, 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 that's it! That's it! I mean, he's like really pissed. I mean, he has a lot of tone to it. And I was thinking he was going to say, there, 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 that's all, folks! But I was wrong. And... When uh, Bugs Bunny said, This place isn't kidding around! I am amused! Notice that when he said that, it sounded very Mel Blankish, as if he's like about to yell in excitement or going to yell. This is like reminiscent of Mel Blank's uh, transition between his normal Bugs Bunny voice to his shouty voice, as you can see in this montage. Space Jam fails to do so. I think that uh, these new cartoons are funny, they're worth a laugh, and how could you not remember those characters and their catchphrases? I mean, who could ever phrase like this? Me. What's up, Doc? Oh, I'm hunting rabbits. You're despicable. I thought I thought putty cat. Fluffering Fluckatash! Hello, hello! What do we have here? I claim this planet in the name of Mars! Oh, I'm the fastest mouse of all Mexico! I say, I say, boy! What's going on around here? <laughs> genius! Absolutely genius! Oh, that now go rascally rabbit, you! Oh, something like that! But how could you remember these, and how could you not like these? I mean, I remember seeing them and getting a laugh out of them. I mean, this is better than the Looney Tunes show. Ugh, far better than the Looney Tunes show. And this is in the same tradition as Wabbit, and we see Daffy Duck putting the Daffy back in Daffy Duck. And if you notice in the cement sequences, uh, the, uh, the, when he's like messing around with the cement, you see, well, Daffy Duck come out of the cement as like various things, one of them is the Statue of Liberty. But if you look very carefully, you can see a statue, a cement statue, of what looks like to be Tex Savory holding hands with Daffy Duck waving and just imitating the statue of Walt Disney waving, holding the hand of Mickey Mouse. And you know what, Warner Brothers? I think they should make statues of these famous animation directors. They should have like a statue of Bob Clampett with holding the hand of Sylvester 
and having and have Tweety on his shoulder or on his head or something like that, or a statue of uh, Chuck Jones, and next to him is Marvin the Martian, and uh, around him is uh, Peppa, could either be Peppa Le Pew chasing the cat or uh, uh, Wally Coyote chasing after the Roadrunner and have Michigan J. Frog dance on top of his head and uh, another statue of uh, Bob McKimson no, Frizz Freeling holding the hands of Yosemite Sam or Frizz Freeling waving and Yosemite Sam shooting his guns in the air and have a sh statue of Bob McKimson to me he's an unsung hero holding hands of Foghorn Leghorn waving while Tasmanian Devil's like spinning around and have like Speedy Gonzales running around too that would be awesome to have statues like that at the Warner Brothers animation studio lot because come on people don't know jack about those these who these people are I mean why do people not know these cartoons and people yet they watched them when they were kids and this happened to me when I was in my animation classes I spoke the names of these uh, famous animation directors and nobody knew who these are until someone piped up a classmate and said famous Warner Brothers animation directors thank you but I think I know why most pe these people these days don't know especially my specifically my animation students my my friends in animation classes back at Mass Arts don't know the names and the men and the names of these men behind those lovable tunes here it is first off they watch a lot of Disney films growing up. Second, they play a lot of video games. Third, they watch a lot of today's recent cartoons like Adventure Time and Regular Show, The Amazing World of Gumball, Uncle Grandpa. They only know these men behind the current cartoons but not the men behind the classic Warner cartoons. And finally, they watch a lot of anime. <laughs> Alright, that's it. With that being said and done, let me know what you think. Who is your favorite Looney Tunes character? Hmm? Mine is uh, Sylvester and Tweety and Coyote and Roadrunner. And uh, let me tell you, before I conclude this, I ran into a lot of people who hate specific Looney Tune characters. I ran into people who hated Daffy Duck. I like Daffy Duck. Why do people hate him? Maybe people said he's like so mean or so unlucky. I even ran into people who hated Coyote and Roadrunner saying that uh, Coyote is, a t is so stupid because his attempts to capture him uh, is going to succeed like this close but it comes comically backfiring, bouncing back next to him. And well, I like Looney Tunes. My favorite is like Sylvester and Tweety and the uh, Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons. And sometimes uh, Foghorn Leghorn cartoons. So. Yes, and if you and and if you're studying animation and if you've been taking a lot of drawing classes, and if you're studying animation, look at the Looney Tunes, the classic ones from the 30s and 40s and 50s. There's a lot of perspective, line, and plane relationship going on around here, and um, also just study the humor of all the cartoons, study the energy the pacing and the energy and study the pacing of it and uh, look how well the story is told and how the gag is formed St analyze it and with that being said and I mean Looney Tunes is like is so timeless it holds a test of time that um, when I when I heard that Brian Crossgrove creator of Danger Mouse and Count Ducula he said in an interview that uh, he liked to thank uh, the Looney Tunes for being an influence to his cartoons. That it's true, I believe so. That can make sense, yes. And to me, Looney Tunes was very influential behind the creation of Sid Simpleton. Watch Sid Simpleton, The Plant of the Aches, and you'll see how 
Looney Tunes influence it was. I mean, remember I said earlier that Looney Tunes was known for making fun of popular culture? When I made my break in recording Pokemon Oh No, guess what? People loved it and they started comparing it to Looney Tunes as if what if Looney Tunes made fun of Pokemon Go? <laughs> so with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe and make a comment down below, ring this bell, and well, this is Matthew Bielmont saying, see ya!